was a deep, deep love of Jesus. And uh, that's what draws us to Him, it's what draws us to, to follow Him, to love Him more and more. And so it's now up to us to, to strive to live for Him. And so we want to be lifted up to that higher See. 
find Diane there for your worship handout bags. Those like to go downstairs for our children's worship to head down to with Miss Christie. Yes, thank you, Christy. God bless stories. you and the life of you. Thank you, Diane, for putting together the, the bags. I had help this month from Shirley and Mary. Too. I Shirley and Mary helped this month, too. That's awesome. That's awesome. You ever hear those days where you're just discombobulated? That's one of those days. Really, so. it's, it's a word I use often, discombobulated. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I thank you for the day. I thank you for the rain, a place to meet that protects from the rain. I thank you that you're good. God, because we've not been that this week. We have not thought of you at times. We have actually been mean and ugly at times. But Lord, your grace, your mercy has been there every single morning for us. You continue to reach out to us, calling us not to be that way, but to, to follow you, to love you more. Now, Lord, I thank you so much for your grace. I thank you so much for, for all that you do. May this morning, maybe, that we would just love you more, that we would follow you more and not get distracted. Um, it takes us away from joy. It takes us away from hope. It just brings in despair to us. Lord, thank you to reach out. Thank you for the church. Thank you for just all that you do once again. And I know it's in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll turn on a fan. By the way, you sang about Ebenezer in that last song, and it's not about Scrooge. It's about the Israelites had set up this stone kind of monument to remind themselves that God is always God. To look back on it and say, God, you've always been with me, and you're going to be with me together. Back on January 9th, 2021, uh, we started this book at First Timothy. January 9th, started preaching through this book. Uh, it's the power of the gospel that's just displayed so much in this book. And this is a, a man named Paul who used to hate Jesus, but his life was changed by the power of Christ. And now he preaches Jesus. He went around the whole world sharing Jesus. He would take other men with him, trying to mentor them and, and place them in areas to continue to share the gospel. The good news is what the gospel means of Jesus to the places all around. And he left Timothy in this place called Ephesus. Ephesus was kind of like, I don't know, I would say like the Las Vegas of the United States. It was just a lot of different things going on that were not very godlike, although there's God honoring places in Las Vegas. Uh, many churches out there reaching out with the gospel. But he's writing this letter to Timothy, who was pastor in the church, he was the elder, the overseer, to encourage him in so many different areas. And, he wrote about how men and women are to, to live out their faith as the body of Christ and all outside of Christ. He wrote about leaders within the church and encouraging them and how there's a standard that we all come to, but the, the, the elders are supposed to be that example. The deacons are helping in ministry. And so many wonderful things in this past uh, 10 months of this book. And so now Paul is ending this letter. It's the last message here in 1st Timothy. So verses 20 and 21 of chapter 6. It says, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you, avoiding irreverent and empty speech and contradiction for what is falsely called knowledge, by professing that some have departed from the faith and all of a sudden grace be with you all. They were done. But he says, guard yourself. Guard. You know, when you think about guards, I think about bodyguards that just big burly guys and you don't want to mess with them. Or, or guards at a, at a, a place of, of protection that are stopping you there. But guarding ourselves is something that's an active thing we need to do. It's, it's looking at our life, looking at what's around us that could damage what we have, could, could hurt what we put our life into. But it says guard yourself because you can easily move away from where you are in your walk with Christ, in your love of Christ, in your living for Christ. And so this morning we're looking at some areas that we need to guard against. Um, some enemies to the faith that seem to come in. The first one is Satan. Satan uh, is the enemy. 
He was an angel created by God, but pride entered his life and thought he was more than God. He wanted to be above God, and, and God kicked him and a third of the angels out of that domain. Um, and so he is he's all around this earth trying to tempt, trying to deceive. He's called uh, the deceiver, he's called the accuser, he's called the liar. He is the enemy. And sometimes we don't realize that there's a spiritual warfare, a spiritual battle going all around us. It's something we don't see, but it's real. Peter wrote about it in First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. He says, your adversary, your adversary, the devil, is prowling around like a roaring lion looking for anyone he can devour. I've only met lions in zoos. There's a big cage there or glass there. But you know, if you've ever been there in a, in a lion and they jump at you, you're jumping too. You're like, you're afraid. Because you don't, you know what a lion is. You know, you, you, you know what they can do. Maybe they can get through that, those bars, or maybe they can jump over the, the, the fence, or maybe they can break through that plexiglass or whatever. And it startles you. Sometimes it makes you afraid because you know the power there. And that's why this is illustrated this way, because lions were real back then when Peter was talking about it. And he's saying there's lions out there, but there's an adversary, an enemy, an accuser, somebody who wants to really hurt you as believers. And he's like a roaring lion. And he scares us at times. He puts thoughts into out there that we sometimes grab. He can't change anything, but he, he tempts us. He, he puts traps out there for us. And we've got to guard ourselves from them. Because he tempts us to, to walk backwards, step back away from our faith just a little bit. Start, step back away from our, our loving Christ. How God has called us to do. He wants to devour us. He wants us to fail. He wants us to say no to Jesus. And so that is out there. He is the enemy. He is the one that is that is very active, him and, and the angels, the fallen angels that are out there. We don't see them, but they're very active in this world today. That's just one enemy. Another enemy that comes in that we need to guard against is situations. And I see this a lot. I've experienced this a lot. Paul said to guard what has been entrusted to us. Guard the faith that has been presented, the truth that is presented to us, guarding what we've learned from God, guarding our life in Christ. And sometimes hard situations come into our life that get us to question. Question God. The death occurs in your family. Why, God? I thought you loved me. Why did this happen? Where were you? Why weren't you watching? I thought you were with me all the time. God, if you really cared about me, this situation would not have happened, whether it's a death, a job situation, a health situation. And I experience this myself, and I see this so much in this world. I'm talking with a gentleman. He's in his upper 20s, and he used to really attend church, not here, you don't know him, but he said his, his grandfather died, and he said that was it. That's it. And he's slowly coming back to wanting God once again. But, but it's about situations we just don't understand. You know, if we look in the book of Job, Job was a man who followed God, and all of a sudden his children all died. Now, how horrible that would be. He had seven. And then all of a sudden his, his wealth just disappeared. And then his health fell apart. And then those things happen to us in large and small ways and it gets us to question. And we're not guarding ourselves anymore. We're blaming God. And then sometimes the situations are not our situations, but other situations because we're, we're trying to follow God and, and that person over there is getting all the good stuff. It seems like their, their life is, is charmed, you might say. You say, God, I don't understand that. God, 
guy named Asaph wrote about this in Psalm 73, verses 2 and 3. He says, but as for me, my feet almost slipped, my steps nearly went astray. Why? Because I envied the arrogant. I saw the prosperity of the wicked. Lord, I am the one who is following you. I am the one who is loving you. I am the one who is, who is trying to strive to, to do right. And look at them. This situation is not right. And that's an enemy that comes into our life. It's an enemy that, that attacks us and, and, and gets our, our thoughts going away from God. Another enemy is speech. By the way, I hope you notice there are all S's this morning. Speech. Listening to others who are not following Jesus. Even this happened to me this weekend. Questioning what God says. And so they bring in the questions and thoughts and, and it starts weighing on our own mind. Because they, they seem smart, they seem well informed, they, they are so sincere in what they say, and even sometimes they, they have science, and I'll use that in quotes, that backs them up with things. Maybe. I don't maybe. I, I know I, I was told in the Bible somewhere that it said something, but I don't know. They seem so smart. And, uh, they, they said it's on Facebook, so obviously it's true. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I mean, it's amazing talking to people where they get this information. And, and their information is always correct. And, and again, they come sincere and they come strong at it, and you go, and many Christians are not guarding their life with that, against that enemy. And we start listening instead of looking into the Word because they're nice, they're strong, they're smart. And that's why Paul was saying that this is what they come at you with irreverent and empty speech and contradictions what is falsely called knowledge. And they, that's what they come. Hey, this is truth. This is knowledge. And they contradict what, what you thought you knew, what you thought you believed. I mean, look at those other religions. They're nice people. We're just all trying to get the same place. And, and experts say, I always love that, it's just as experts say, who's these experts? I watch the History Channel occasionally. I used to watch it more when they have these things about the Bible and Jesus. And they always have these experts on there. And always the experts are the ones that say, well, this didn't really happen like this. You know, the latest one I saw was about Sodom and Gomorrah, that, that they, they now have found this, this asteroid, or this uh, meteorite that came in and destroyed them. They have evidence of that. It's like, okay. Because the experts said that. It's like, oh, that must be true. I saw a few different articles about that. It. It's like, wow. No, I guess they were there. They saw it coming down in the sky. <laughs> you know, it was God who rained the fire and brimstone. Could God have done that? Yes. But they don't attribute it to God, but it's the experts that say that, the scientists say that, others say that. And we're supposed to believe them because it's there. And those are enemies to the truth. And Paul said we need to guard ourselves from them. We still listen to I listen to people. I mean, in my mind, I'm thinking you know, how deceived you are at times. Another enemy, I think this is an enemy of the church that is very real. Um, an enemy that, that gets us to really loosen up our walk with God. And that's satisfaction. We are satisfied with where we are in our walk with God. I, I, I've been going this way. You know, I've been going to church all my life. I'm good. I'm there most Sundays, you know. When I'm not there, it's, you know, always, always, you know. I'm good. And, and there's never a striving to, to pray. There's never a desire to grow in the Lord. There's never a desire to learn more from what God has. And, and when we are satisfied there, that's where Satan wants us. 
That's where the situations come into play and the speech comes in and starts messing with us because we think we're good because we've always been that way. We're satisfied with, with where we are. And Paul writes to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians 10, 12, he says, whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. Now, you can put this in a real life situation, right? Where, where you're just standing here on this ledge here. I know there's a ledge here. Ah! You know? Where we think we're, we're good, but we're just not careful physically. And we, we trip over something this tall. Or we, we think the steps are done. And there's one more step and we missed it. We go tumbling. Or we think there, there's one more step. And those are the hard ones. You're going down a step, you think one more step. There's a lot of step. <laughs> You know, and, and it, we stumble because we're not being careful about our, our physical walk. But when we're satisfied in Christ, we're, we're not striving, we're not growing, we're just okay with where we are. And I see Christians this way. We're praying and fellowship and, and reaching out, and giving, and it just starts sliding because I'm just satisfied. But we have to remember that the devil's prowling around looking for these weak areas in our life. And when we're satisfied, when we're listening to the speech, when the situations are there just, just attacking us and we're not on guard, Satan says yes. And there's other S's I could, and I had to stop myself. There's self. It all leads to self. You know, it's just me. There's solitude. Some people just so focused on just, I just want to be by myself and not around people. Some people are so scared. Some have idols like sports. And it's anything that leads us away from God. So, Paul says be on guard. So how do we be on guard? There's a lot of those little S's out there. And I, and I, I made sure there were little S's because there's, there's, Big S's. I, I bought this the other day. I'm so proud of my team. What is this? Superman. Superman. That's right. My Superman. Did. And Superman, I mean, you know, Superman. I mean, he, he's all powerful. Except for Kryptonite. That's the only thing that really messes him up. And so we're going to look at some very powerful things that help us be on guard for those things that tear us down, the things that lead us astray, that distract us, the things that, that Paul is saying, hey, Timothy, you're a pastor. You've got to be on guard for these things. Three, all capitals, focus on the Savior. That's the big one. The Savior. I mean, why is he called the Savior? Because he saved us from our sins. He has saved us from hell. He has saved us from desperation. He has saved us from hopelessness. He has saved us from so much because of what He did for us on the cross. And this is where that love of God, oh, the deep, deep love of Jesus. Romans 5, 8, but God proves His own love for us in that while we, we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We were the scum of the earth. And God says, you know, I understand that, but I still love you. And I'm going to send my son to die for you. And we forget that. And I think when we're, when we're on guard, we're remembering that more and more, that I have a Savior, I needed a Savior, I still need a Savior, I need to focus on Him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 God the Father made the one who did not know sin, Jesus, to be sin for us, so that in Him we might become the righteousness of God. This is what God did for us. We were scum. He said, but I want you to become righteous. So I'm sending my son, who didn't know my sin. He wasn't scum. He was holy, but he's coming to die for you. And every time I start thinking about what Jesus did for me, scum, what he did for me on the cross, that he saved me, he loved me when I was scum. It's like, man, that's awesome. All these things that they say that has nothing compared to this, the Savior. Isaiah 53, verses 5 and 6, predicting, talking about Jesus who was to come 
hundreds of years later. It says, He was pierced. He was pierced because of our rebellion. He was crushed because of our iniquities, our sins. He took the punishment for our peace was on Him and we are healed by His wounds. We all went astray like sheep. We all turned our own way. And the Lord, the Father, punished Him for the iniquity of us all. And what a great God we serve. We, we can't work our way up to make Him love us because that's impossible. He loved us where we were. He punished Jesus for us. And, and again, I, I start looking at that. Hebrews chapter 12, 1 and 2, second half of 1 says, Let us lay aside every hindrance. Hindrance, by the way. The satisfaction. The listening to speech that is falsely called knowledge. Let's lay aside those situations that get us against thinking about God. And also the sin, those choices of self that so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that lies before us, keeping our eyes on Jesus. He was the pioneer and perfecter. He was the founder and the finisher of our faith. He is. But listen to what he did for us. For the joy that lay before him, he endured the cross despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. That's what we need to keep our eyes on. I mean, we're going to listen to speech, and we're going to have situations. Self is going to get in the way. And Satan's always going to be attacking and tempting. But when our eyes are on Christ, that's strong. How? You know, it's like, I understand those things. I understand that. I, I've, I've heard it and I, and I believe it. But, but I, need, I need it to be more real. So another card, we've been doing it. The scriptures. This book, this Bible. This 66 books in here. 39 the Old Testament, 27 the New Testament. The Old Testament was pointing to Jesus. The Son of God coming in, in the New Testament is all about Jesus and the church and what He's done. The whole book is about Jesus. And, and we, we wonder why we're listening to speech. We wonder why those situations are coming in. We wonder why we're falling for these things. And we never open this thing. What do we expect? Right? I mean, we have them on our phones. We have them on tablets. We have them on computers. We have them in book form. And it's like, I'm satisfied. And that's what happens. Again, I've been there. I understand this fully. But I know when I go in this book, which is no ordinary book, I'm finding truth and joy and hope because it's getting me to look at Jesus more. It's getting me to look at me, at me who I was and what God has done in my life because of who He is. Proverbs 30, verse 5. Every word of God is pure. Yes? And He is a shield to him who take refuge in Him. He is a shield. He is that guard for us. But if we are looking at His word, we start questioning who He is because they say they know who God is and we listen to who they say God is and He must be that because they said it. And then what happens? That's, we just fall. And it's just hard. Guard your life. And you're going to find the refuge, the protection of God in your life more and more. Colossians 3.16, let the word of Christ dwell richly among you. The word of Christ, again, Genesis and Revelation. This is all the word of Christ. Let it dwell, let it live inside you richly, strongly. And say, well, I don't understand. I know. There's a lot I don't understand. But start reading. If you can't understand it, ask somebody or just move on. Keep on reading. So let it dwell richly among you in all wisdom, teaching, 
and admonishing one another through psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. So we have the Word of God, and it's doing something. It's helping us. It's causing us to sing. And when we focus on the Savior and the Scriptures, we find one more strong Yes, and that's the saints. Us. We are saints. Those of us who, who call on Christ to save us. We have been transformed from sinner. That was our title. Now our title, our reality, our hope our, in Jesus is saints. We are saints. Everyone, everyone who's a Christian is a saint. You don't have to have somebody vote on it to be your saint. You are a saint because God said you're a saint. Through faith in Christ and what he did for us on the cross. In other words, we need each other. And I know, without a shadow of doubt in my mind, when, when a Christian leaves the fellowship of the saints, situations, speech, self, Satan says, yes. Because you're going to start listening to me more, he says. Because we're not getting strengthened from one another. There's times in our lives when we are, it's hard we're, we're, we're not feeling it, you know. It's like, God, where are you? You're silent, even though I'm reading, even though I'm attending, God, where are you? And we go through that. And that's why we continue to do this. We continue to focus on Jesus. I'm never going to stop talking about Jesus. I'm never going to use, not use the Scriptures, because that's where God's Word. I'm never, prayerfully, ever going to stop Gathering with saints, although the temptation at time is there. All those situations say, they didn't. I start looking at they, you, and say, they didn't, so I'm backing off because they didn't. That's because we all fail, but when we come together, when we're strengthened by each other, when we're, we're in the scriptures, we're singing together, when we're looking to the Savior together, there's so much strength there. And that is a great guard in my life. It should be a great guard in your life. It's not about marking off, I've been to church. It's not about how many times I've been this year. It's about the fellowship and strength that we have because of what God has done for us through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hebrews 10, 24 and 25, Let us consider one another in order to provoke love and good works, not neglecting to gather together as some are in the heaven of me, but encouraging each other, and all the more you see the day approaching. In other words, there's a day coming where Jesus is coming back, and as this day approaches, it's going to get harder and harder and harder in this world to live for Him, especially on your own. That's why we gather, and I use this verse a lot, but why do we gather? Says it to provoke love, to stir up love, to stir up good works of going out for each other and, and going out into this world, to encourage one another because this world stinks. It is so discouraging, this world is. You turn on the news and how many times you go, wow, yeah, that much. The news, what you see, is discouraging. That's why we need each other. Because we're not just gathered as a group. Hey, hi, let's, let's just ramp it up and feel good. No, we're here because of our Savior. Amen. We study the scriptures to give us strength. And we need one another. We need the encouragement. I need the encouragement. You need the encouragement. I need you to stir up in me. You need me to stir up in you. We need to stir up all each other and love one another. Amen. Because we have to guard our life. I bet each one of us can think of somebody who hasn't been to church a long time when they used to go to church. They used to say, I love Jesus, but now they're just, yeah. Hebrews 3.13, but encourage each other daily while it's still called today, so that none of you is hardened by sin's deception. That's why Paul was so adamant. At the end of this letter, after giving all the instructions, Timothy, Guard your life. You have been entrusted. You have been given so many gifts of the scriptures, of fellowship, of, of, of all of this. But you still need to watch yourself. Guard your life. 
That's why we're here today. It's to praise and worship, yes, but to help us have a guard. That's why at the end of this letter, I, I just love this, at the end of the letter, and he needs to say, watch out. Because those people are out there. Watch out. I mean, where are you today? I mean, I mean just be honest with yourself. Honest with yourself. God knows where you are. But honest with yourself. I mean, are you struggling in your walk with God? I mean, just because you come in here doesn't mean you're not struggling. You just think about your situations and what they're doing to you. Think about the speech that you're hearing. Think about satisfaction and all, anything else. But you're here today. And that's why, yes, all those enemies are real. But I'm telling you, when we are encouraged by one another because of Christ, there's, that's what joy is. This, I mean, just be honest with you. Sometimes I, I come and I'm like, oh, it's Sunday. Not often. Okay, it's not often. But sometimes, I'm like, oh, it's Sunday. But not once, not once, have I ever regretted Amen. by the end of the day because I'm like, I'm encouraged. Even when people are sharing some very hard things that are going on in their life, I'm still encouraged because we're gathered together. We're able to pray for one another, to encourage one another. And I just love what God does to all of you. I hear stories. I'm like, yes, God, no. Because you're loving each other and helping each other, encouraging each other. Yeah. That's what we are here for. Because when we go out there, it's worse. And that's why it's encouraging you daily. We have phones. We can text. We can email. We can go. We all need these daily things, especially praying for one another. And that's why the very last words of Paul here, he says, grace be with you all. Grace is, he's saying, this is God doing all this. God is good. God wants to shower you with all his joy and hope and peace and all those things. And that's what we've got to guard against. That's what we've got to gather together. That's why he's writing to Timothy. Timothy, lead this this way. Because Timothy, it's, it's going to be real for you, all these temptations. That's going to be real for all of us, for our believers. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor. Daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, God, like a fetter, like that binding cord up there, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander. Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart. Take it, seal it. Seal it for thy courts of love. That's my prayer. This, this is one of my favorite songs. The prone to wander, Lord, I feel it. And so, I'm praying for God's help. But it's not just God doing it. It's me and us together. So we're not wandering. So our our prone is changing to prone to follow instead of prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, take a seal it for your glory, for my good, and for the kingdom to expand through us. Let's pray. God, I thank you again for your grace and your mercy and your passions today because each one of us needed this. Each one of us need you. And God, we have succumbed, we have let the enemies just in at times. Because we get tired, we get discouraged, we get sad. And Lord, those are going to come. But Father, I thank you that those are all small things compared to you, Jesus. That we have the scriptures, that all these precious promises are here for us. God, I thank you so much that we have one another, the church, this gathered body that you have put together, that you have saved, that we were all sinners and we still struggle with it. But Lord, you have saved us, you have made us holy, you have, you have given us heaven and taken away hell out of our life. God, I pray that we more and more be a church of encouragement. Not out of hype or emotion, but because of you, Jesus, our Savior. 
I pray that we get stronger in, in your word. God, that we would put more of the Bible in our life, not in the brainwashing, but to see the truth of it, to see the, the strength that you have given to us. Lord, that we can help one another in these trying times, but also that we can go out from these walls and share love and truth in love with others so they can know you through faith in Jesus. God, I pray that we would be a blessing to each other. I pray that we would be a blessing to our community and beyond for your glory and your glory alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Let's stand. We're going to sing that verse I just talked about here. So when we sing that chorus, make it a prayer to God.
Yeah. <laughs> you have no idea how much we love you. I mean, we love you. Uh, it's just an amazing thing that God has gifted us with each other. And as, uh, as the leader here, as the shepherd that's under the true shepherd, uh, I love the flock. And so thank you very much. Okay. Let's, let's go on. How about that? Wednesday night, we're in Revelation chapter 22, verses 6 through 15. All is done with our Revelation study. Uh, it's been great as we continue to look on the goodness of God uh, and what He has in store for us um, after the end of, of this world that we live in. Uh, next Sunday, we have Bible study at 9.30, worship at 10.30. It's a great time gathering together. I love it. I uh, just love it. And again, I, I struggle with like you. Ah, Sunday. Sometimes I don't want to go, but I never have a regret of gathering together. It's always more joyful. Uh, birthdays this week. Kenny Thrower. He's he's still recovering. I, I ate lunch with him Sunday, but he's still recovering from didn't have COVID, but he had some nasty bug. Uh, and so he's been working six days a week, and it's just he called this morning to say I scanned this morning. So uh, so happy birthday, Kenny. For those online, make sure you, you give him that happy birthday. Uh, truck or treat. Here's an exciting thing. It was canceled. So there's one enough participation. And, and speaking of that, I'll get right back to this. Uh, Mama Bees is closed till Thursday because they can't get enough participation. We usually have coffee on Mondays, but those who join us, they're now closed till Thursday because a lack of workers. Uh, so make that a prayer request. Uh, just all places. It's just it's crazy. I've never experienced something like this in my lifetime. We've gone through a lot of hard times in our country, but this is unprecedented, the dying world. Uh, so pray, if, if you can work, please work. Uh, but pray for the local businesses especially, uh, local places that don't have the corporations uh, as they struggle. Uh, so, but truck or treat, go back truck or treat. So, go back one, Larry, please. Truck or treat. We collected this, and I found out, and I was just like, ah. Oh, what am I going to do? Well, I can eat half of that. <laughs> and so I just kept on thinking, what are we going to do? And so then I went home and drove by the school. I was like, well, duh. We are going to be a blessing to our school once again. We're going to put together uh, plastic shoe boxes full of candy for each classroom. They will distribute it. We're going to give the big bars to the teachers and staff so they can enjoy that. We'll, we'll send some other healthy stuff too for those who read it as some healthy. Although I look at that and I say, ooh, health. That's <laughs> and so if you'd like to bring some more candy, that's that'd be great. I don't think we need more big ones unless you already bought them. We'll still get them out there. But some more small ones so kids can have more than one. There's 300, over 300 children over there. And we have probably, I think there's like 700 pieces of candy in there already. But it'd be great to get them more than a few. But again, we want to be a blessing to our school we have ties with. So, if you have candy, it's fine, but if you want to get the plastic shoe boxes that have lids, not big things, but plastic shoe boxes, and what they are, um, that way we can get into each classroom out there. All right. Are there anything, any questions on that? Do you know how many classrooms there are? No, we're, we're getting the information getting back with now, and okay. also teachers and aides per class. So we want to bless everybody up there, uh, and then we'll find out also if there's any food restrictions. That's why we have chocolate and just sugar. Again, all the good things. <laughs> so the tooth fairy can come and enjoy <laughs> their work. <laughs> uh, yeah, Edith lost a tooth this week, so. Yeah, did, you, did you hit her? Oh, no. All right, so, so again, we're going to be a blessing for our community. That's what we want to be. And so it's just a change of blessing. All right, then offering on the way out, if God is leading you to, and he better be obedient to this as he leads. Place it out there or do online. Uh, one other thing, we are still giving away these books. If you have not gotten one or if you have an old friend, honestly, if you have a friend that would like to get this book, hearing great things from people we're reading ourselves, but it is good. It's encouraging. It points us to Jesus and just who He is. Very encouraging book. And sometimes I'm like, I'm like, I don't get it. And I just move on. Okay, in my reading. And so I'll have those back there uh, for you all. If you've not received one or you know someone else. Anybody, anything else? All right. This next sign says, have a great week as you share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Where it goes. 
Give me a gun of this guy. 